Hello and Happy New Year! If you're new to the channel, I'm Robin aka Styles and Seams and I like to sew and create including this dress. It's been a little while since I shared a video with you but I have been sewing, I've been creating, I've been planning and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I have been up to over the last several weeks and months and tell you about some goals for 2021. <music> and not in my sewing space is because something big happened between my last video and today. I changed up my living situation a little bit and I'm still in the same apartment but now I have a dedicated sewing room and I've redecorated my living room and brought art throughout my home so that I can continue to foster my creative juices everywhere I step in my apartment. So this is my brand new gallery wall featuring some of my artworks that I created when I was 13 and maybe nine or ten <laughs> including some other uh, gallery prints from a book that I found and I just figured I'd show that off today as I also show off a couple of the holiday party dresses I've made over the last couple of weeks. This one that I'm wearing is my New Year's Eve party dress. Now it's 2020 so I was not going to anyone's club or traveling or doing anything crazy for New Year's Eve but I did have a really small celebration with a few very close friends, kind of a little pod bubble situation and I wanted to sparkle and use one of my favorite fabrics. If you remember from my fall fabric haul video, I got this beautiful velvet sequin jersey from Fab Scrap Shop um, when I went back in August, and I just knew then that it was perfect for making a holiday party dress, and I really wanted to do a bodycon silhouette to take advantage of the stretch and keep it super simple because this was my first time sewing with sequins. So what I chose to do was to use the Pua tank pattern, which I've now used for three different garments, two shirts and this dress. It gave me the chance to use something I was very familiar with so that the sewing part um, would be the actual difficulty, the actual cutting sewing manual labor part, and not the planning part. But I did hack the pattern to make it a dress by um, measuring my body, figuring out the correct amount of negative ease, and drafting a pattern for it. If you go to my blog, you'll see a bunch of pictures of this dress and a ton of tips on how to sew with sequined velvet stretch fabric so you can find some fabulous fabric like this and make it for yourself. And here is my red dress. I made this dress for the virtual holiday social that was hosted by a few awesome Instagrammers. I wasn't actually able to attend the live Zoom event because I threw a little holiday party on the same day, but I wanted to be festive and do it for the gram and have something beautiful to wear for the holidays, even if there weren't holiday parties to travel to, and I wore this thoroughly in my house. I think the most fun that I had doing this dress was really just like loosening up and showing the full pattern fitting process with everyone on Instagram in my PJs and some levels and in the different muslins and I got a look of really positive feedback from it. This fabric was first featured on my fabric haul video and uh, I got it from Metro Textiles. It's this lovely viscose uh, aka rayon uh, jacquard fabric that has these beautiful textures and patterns in it and I really wanted to create a design that um, really just let the fabric speak for itself. I think sometimes in my head I'm, I want to do a little bit of like over design and have all these different like 
seam lines and darts and structures to try to get it to fit close to my body. But what I really wanted and needed for this dress was to let it be loose and have as few seam lines as possible. And that really created the challenge of doing the design and getting the fit right because I am not a flat straight body and I didn't want it to look like a potato sack. So with my variations of muslins, I went through and I ended up adding a bust dart that's almost not visible, but follows more or less the same line as the deep V. And I did a center back seam so that I could take out a lot of fullness from the back and still be able to carve out and curve out my shape a little bit more. It pretty much came down to the wire with sewing this dress before my event. I was also cooking a ridiculously large meal for a few people on the day that I sewed it, but it took a few hours to sew up. I had planned it out a couple of days in advance and I was going through all of the different pattern fittings and it wasn't getting quite right. And I think it's because of what my process was um, and I just had to trust the process. So to make this dress, I started with a woven tee pattern that I had drafted for myself back in the spring of 2020. And from that pattern, I had also made a deep V-neck shirt that wasn't quite to the point where I wanted it to be, but it had the V about as low as I possibly could take it. And so I used that as a starting point and I created a pattern that was a lot of ease. I think I initially started with like nine inches of ease at the hips and then I just molded it down little by little. And what I think is so great about doing it that way is instead of having to create like six different muslins where I'm trying to get the fit bigger and bigger, I was able to just hack away a little by little and make the changes both to the pattern and to the fabric and do basting stitches with the different muslins. So to make this dress, I actually did two different muslins, one getting it almost down to the size that I want, and two really to just check my changes because I had gone back and forth so want much, I wanted to make sure that what I actually had on paper represented what I was seeing fit on the cotton and on my body. The sleeves really came together in the last minute with a bit of luck. I had my fabric laid out. I'd already cut the pattern pieces and I was like, hmm, there might be enough to do this on the bias. And so I went ahead and I sewed up the dress and I waited until kind of the last minute. I was like checking my mind, like, is this going to work? Am, am I going to be able to do it on the bias? Like, is that my solution? And I just decided to go for it. Um, I marked it out. I cut it on the bias and it was just perfect to give me the extra little bit of drape that I need to make them a little bit flouncy, kind of like my little angel wings like I like to do. So that was the last bit. And then I had this perfect holiday dress that I just love. Um, I'll say one thing that's not quite perfect. Probably next time I will make this slightly less long in this bit so that the V doesn't drop down quite so much because you know, the girls are on full display, but I'm okay with that. So what I have is this vibrant and fun feminine ship dress that I can wear for years to come, hopefully out to a party next time. All of the details for this dress, the red dress and Everything that I have sewn recently are on my blog, stylesandseams.com. Please check it out and get the tips for all the sewing and leave me some comments and let me know what you like. As I grow as a sewist and learn more and more about the construction of garments, I'm starting to move away from relying upon sewing patterns in order to make what I want to wear. So this is actually a little bit of a semi-homemade garment, whereas the other one was fully from scratch, talking about down to the bare bones from scratch for my body. And both of them offered a really unique challenge about learning how to get something to fit me, my six foot two tall frame, my curves, all of my humps and lumps, and get it to be the beautiful vision that I have in my head. And I enjoyed the process so much that for 2021, I have a project that I want to start, which is going to be 52 different garments in 52 weeks. I haven't figured out the hashtag yet, so help me out below, but this is what it is. Every week I'm going to sketch or design on my computer, or somehow plan out a new garment, and I'm gonna to try to bring that to life by pattern drafting the garment for myself. 
maybe some really, really intense pattern hacks of an existing pattern that I have if I wanna do something um, building upon a design that I've already worked out, or it could be completely from scratch, making something from the pattern to the actual sewn garment start to finish. I have an Instagram from Karamia who did 100 dresses in 100 days and that was incredibly impressive. I don't think that I can do a new garment every day, but maybe one per week. Some will be more simple than others. I can really take advantage of the crazy huge fabric sash that I always seem to have to really create something special week after week. Now, if you think 52 garments in 52 weeks is crazy, in volume, maybe a bit for actually doing all of that handmade. But if you think about the amount of garments that the average American purchases within a year, which is somewhere between like 62 and 67 per year, 2020 aside, it's pretty reasonable with the number of new things that we add to our wardrobe each year. I haven't purchased any garments from the store since 2018. Um, no ready to wear garments. I have been gifted a few things from various collaborations, but sewing my wardrobe is the only way that I replace the garments in my wardrobe that wear out, stretch out, no longer fit, are no longer to my style. And so doing this not only will help me build my sewing skills, but it will help me to stay clothed the way that I wanna be clothed all year long. I'm hoping to keep this as sustainable as possible using um, as much of the fabric that I already have as possible, but maybe also sourcing some fabric from places like Fab Scrap where it's dead stock or supporting some local small businesses with my purchases. One of my favorite things that I did in 2020 was participate in Me Made May where I was modeling garments, photographing them and posting them every single day on Instagram. For that month, I was making one new garment per week or more in some weeks, and that was about the right pace that I liked. I was, I was doing it at a comfortable pace that also allowed me to do the work that I need to do in other avenues, to photograph it, to create content in other ways, and to share it with more people in the sewing community. So I think one garment per week is just the right frequency for me. Please comment below if you have an idea of what I should name this project. I would love it to be something catchy. So yeah, give me your suggestions. I've been thinking like 52 garments, 52 weeks, one garment per week, but I think like giving it that specificity will help me to remain consistent and to always do it and not try to back out. Even if there's some weeks where I have to make something super simple, I think this will be a, a great frequency for me. So that's my big goal for 2021. Drop me a comment below if you have any ideas for how I should structure this project, what you wanna see me bring to video to share the journey with you. Do you wanna see me do like literally the whole thing start to finish and talk you through it? Would you just wanna see like finished garments? Should I make a video every week featuring this project or should I, you know, group a couple of them together and show off um, when I'm going on different thematic elements, different themes. Yeah, let me know in the comments below. I really want this to be like a project that inspires others to get into drafting their own patterns and sewing their own garments and hopefully answer some questions about like what that process looks like as I go along. I'm most excited that it's just going to like build my skills. I'm a self-taught sewist and so the way that I learn how to do more and sew more and create is by practicing. Like there is no learning without putting it into practice and I can read all day the theory or you know check out textbooks all I want but if I'm not like forcing myself to sew for my body for a real body week after week then I'm not building my skills and I might as well just like call this a hobby and not a goal. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can follow this journey. Please like, comment, and share this with anyone else you think wants to join me on this journey. Follow me on Instagram because I'm always posting things on there before it hits YouTube of what my goals are. I am so excited for 2021 and what we're going to share and enjoy together. Have a good one.